We'll take a look now at the improvements in simulation for 2017. So switching over to SOLIDWORKS, we have an example on the screen uh, of the electronics enclosure for the MyOMO Pro. And what we'd like to do is take a look at how this clip uh, deforms and what loads are introduced when we deform that. So we'll take a look at that now and open the part in its own window. So we can see this is a fairly detailed component with a lot of uh, extra features and bits and pieces that we don't necessarily need for our simulation study. So one of the first things that we can do is simplify the geometry. So you can see here the geometry has been simplified to the area of interest, uh, i.e. the clip. We're using a symmetric constraint down the inside to indicate that there's two of these. We've fixed the outer face and we're applying a translation to the face highlighted in pink by 2.3 millimeters. So that's how far the clip is gonna deform into the model. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that study. And the first thing that we'll notice is the message box that appears. In previous versions of SOLIDWORKS, if you were running a simulation uh, and perhaps you left your desk because you knew the simulation was gonna take some time, uh, the message box would appear and it wouldn't dismiss. We now have the ability to automatically dismiss error messages or dialog boxes on screen with default options. So the simulation can continue to run even while somebody's not at the machine. So now our simulation is completed, we can take a look here at the stress plot. So from a new user perspective, this can be a little bit difficult to interrogate. So new for 2017 is the ability to create a stress hotspot diagnostics. So using this tool here, we can specify a sensitivity factor and we can run a stress hotspot diagnostic on our model and get it to highlight and isolate key areas of high stress. So here we'll see on this particular model that we see a high stress hotspot around this sharp edge here. Now that could be because of a singularity. We may have simplified the model a little bit too much and actually removed a fillet from this area. So this is giving us some useful feedback to say the high stress is in this area. Uh, maybe we need to do a little bit more work on the model to sort that out. If we come out of the stress hotspot diagnostics here and go back into the stress plot, you'll notice that I've got a custom color applied here to the upper bounds of the graph. Now in previous releases, this was quite awkward to do, but now in 2017, we can interact directly with the graph on screen and we can apply custom colors to the upper bounds of the stress plots directly from uh, the graph here. We'll just change that back to a more attractive pink color and we'll look at the next improvement. So realistically, this part would be better served uh, in terms of a simulation by looking at a non-linear analysis, which we can now do in a couple of clicks using some new options for 2017. So if we right click on the tab towards the bottom, we can copy the study and we can actually specify whether we're going to save that copy into a new static study, maybe look at, to look at some alternative loadings, or in our case, to look at a more comprehensive analysis with the non-linear element of the software. So we can just choose this from the bottom here, duplicate that study, and everything from uh, our original study has come through. So material, fixtures, loads, mesh, all that information. So we are pretty much ready to run. One of the other things I just want to point out on here is we have access to external material libraries. Uh, it's called Materiality. So we can take a look here and look for some specific nonlinear properties. So quite a useful uh, ability for us to have. One of the other areas that's seen some improvements is in, within the property dialog box. We now have an automatic solver selection for nonlinear analysis. So whilst we're in the nonlinear analysis, we can take a look at the stress plot here and see we see some much more detailed results and you'll see that stress hotspot has moved itself away from there. So we can now just get a, a better understanding of how that part behaves.
If we switch back to our main assembly now, so one of the things that used to frustrate users was the lack of definition within the model. You'll see a lot of the appearances have sort of been dropped back to uh, a non-real view display. Uh, and it's not an ideal way to, uh, to display those results. So new for 2017, uh, instead of showing those stress plots there like so, we can actually switch back to our model just come out of the section view here and we can use the new simulation display option so this will use real view and open geo graphics and allow us to choose uh, any study results from the simulation studies that may have been run uh, within the assembly and specify key options for how much reflectivity brightness etc etc that we have in here so we have much more control and hopefully you'll agree the results are much more compelling in terms of how they look. So in summary, what we've seen is the ability to self-dismiss solver messages, the introduction of the stress hotspot diagnostics. We can directly set the colors on plots in the graphics areas. We can easily convert static studies to nonlinear or dynamic. Within the nonlinear analysis, we have an intelligent solver switcher. And we also now have a, a much nicer ability to display the simulation results in SOLIDWORKS. So there's a couple of other updates here that are worth mentioning. So the first one is beam joints will now automatically update if any uh, geometry modifications are made. And we can also edit multiple contact sets uh, within the connectors section of any simulation study. The final update here is the ability to offload simulations. So you can configure a, uh, a simulation on your desktop machine and then offload that to maybe a more powerful machine on your network to run the simulation overnight.